episodes deal with serious and often distressing events. If you or someone you know is suffering, don't hesitate to reach out to your local crisis center. Please see the show notes for this episode for suggested links and numbers to confidential assistance and a more detailed list of content warnings available via your streaming app or the website. Thank you. Hello again, Nightmare Society. Get comfy and prepare yourself for another episode of The Nightmare Society. Last night, my husband woke me up around 11.50 p.m. to tell me that someone has been knocking on our door and ringing our apartment doorbell for about 10 minutes on and off. He woke me so I could possibly ID the person. Once I looked out our upstairs apartment window, I saw the man walking to his car in our apartment parking lot across the street from our unit. He was wearing blue jeans and a gray t-shirt. He was a medium build, possibly 30 year old blonde man. He wasn't covering his face or anything. But the thing is, he was carrying what looked like resistance bands, or rope. He sat in his car for around three minutes while I was on the phone with dispatch. Then he came back to our door and knocked hard for another few minutes. Dispatch advised me that the police were on their way, and they hung up. I started video recording the vehicle. I read out the tag number and make and model and just watched as he put his car in park and reverse over and over again. Out of seemingly nowhere, he backed out of the parking lot and started rushing away, but not before the officer arrived and pulled him over. My downstairs neighbor knocked on my door and told me that he had been peering into her little children's windows and was pounding on her door as well. She said that her husband had left only one minute before he started knocking at her door. She said he saw her children through the window and that's why he continued knocking. Our doors are right next to one another, so he probably didn't know which door he wanted opened. He was just watching us as well through our upstairs window, so I turned all the lights out and shut the blinds while I called dispatch. The police never contacted us for a statement. I've reached out to dispatch about an update, and I'm waiting to see if any action was taken. We're keeping our eyes peeled to see if he's been following us. I'm replacing my porch light bulbs with motion detectors and putting bars on our windows and door tracks. My neighbors and our families are panicked, to say the least. He was outside for about 25 to 30 minutes. So, to the knocking man with bad intentions, let's not meet. Update. I am trained in firearm usage, and I now live in a state where I can open carry, and the background check is really quick. We are going this weekend to get a firearm. My husband will be taking some classes as he came from somewhere where owning a gun is illegal, so he's never handled one. I'm still waiting on a call from the responding officer. If they don't do anything, I will go ahead and make a suspicious person's case for the paper trail. We had no odd encounters last night. However... While I was looking at the video, I remember that car. I was walking my dog at 8 p.m. a week ago for him to use the restroom, and this car was driving really slow through the parking lot and parked a few spots down from where I was letting my dog sniff. They just sat there with the car running. When I tell you my ears started ringing and I got an awful feeling, I am not joking. I turned around and went home. I didn't give my dog a chance to use the restroom and shut every door and window. I think this man has been staking out our apartment building, me and my neighbors. I think he wanted to get in where those kids were. Update. It's been a week since the incident. I called dispatch today because I never received a follow-up call from the responding officer. A sergeant from the police department called me back to give me more information. He said that they pulled the man over, ran him to make sure that there were no warrants, and asked him what he was doing. 
He told the officer that he was meeting up with an acquaintance. The officer let him go with no further questions. Not only that, the responding officer is also a sergeant. I about lost my mind. The sergeant I spoke to today stated that he should have looked into it more. It was obviously an attempt at burglary, sexually motivated and or with the intent to commit a felony. The responding officer is supposed to call me tonight when he gets on duty. Final update. The officer finally called me. Here's how the conversation went. I answer the phone groggily. Hello, as it was well past midnight. Hello, miss. I was told you have some questions about an incident a few nights ago. I reminded him about the incident that happened, that he was looking through windows and carrying potential restraints, and I'm not sure if it was relayed to him. I stopped him, ran his tags, and he told me that he was meeting up with a guy from a dating app. He seemed forthcoming and open with his motive for being there. I asked him why someone who was just meeting up with someone from a dating app would be looking in windows and carrying around restraints, knocking on doors, being generally creepy to the people who live in this apartment building, and his response was that the man just seemed forthcoming. To which I'm thinking, so was Jeffrey Dahmer. I remind him again that the man had rope or resistance bands with him. Yeah, he had a lot of belongings in his car, so he probably just had them in there. Okay. I tell him that he saw the little girls, the neighbors, through the window. He waited until my neighbor's husband left to knock on the door. It's all on tape. I know this because I contacted the apartment management after the incident. Well, I'm familiar with this individual, and I've been doing drive throughs of your complex to make sure he doesn't come back. I haven't seen anything. If you don't have any more questions, I'll let you go. Okay. I don't have much to say. I just feel so icky about that conversation. Nothing new has come of the situation. I have not seen the man or the car. My mind is blown at the lack of follow-up or due diligence. I live in a suburb, and not a busy one either. This police department has a small jurisdiction. But, uh, guess I'll have to protect myself. This is a story of a terrifying old creep that has stalked me since I was 16 years old. I'm currently 23. So basically, to set the scene, I'm an average height, average size 23 year old female. I've been told I'm very approachable and perhaps too nice to strangers. I sometimes just don't have the heart to tell people to screw off, and I definitely should. Obviously, I'm not going to give specific details, but I worked in a restaurant which was inside a bigger shopping center. My stalker, an old man named Eric, worked for the actual shopping center itself and not for a store inside it, like me. When I was 16 and first started the job, I was quite timid and awkward and let anyone say pretty much anything to me. I didn't quite know what to say when older customers and other employees would make inappropriate comments to me. I would simply just laugh it off or just not respond. In my 16-year-old mind, this was a lot easier to handle. I had one other friend at my job who was my age, and her name was Jessica. Jessica had worked there for longer than I had, and one day she asked me if I had heard this guy who worked in the shopping center called Eric. Jessica described Eric as very strange. She didn't describe him as frightening or unsettling or even someone to be afraid of. Just as a very eccentric man. Really, she and other employees would laugh at his odd sayings and awkward behavior. Jessica has also told me that Eric had brought her a present on Valentine's Day. Chocolate. Anyone would think this was friendly behavior or harmless flirting if he wasn't a 50-something-year-old man bringing chocolates to a 16-year-old girl he barely knows. I began to see for myself that Eric wasn't just an innocent old man with a slight crush. He had other intentions. The first time I remember Eric approaching me was when I was filling up a machine near the entrance of my work. This machine was out of the view of all the other employees, and the restaurant was empty, so this was pretty much the perfect time for a creep to approach without even being seen. 
Eric wasn't supposed to enter my place of work when he was working at the shopping center, so he had deliberately gone out of his way to come and speak to me. To describe his appearance, he is your typical creepy old loner. He was gaunt, had gray hair with bald patches, and had beady little eyes which never diverted from yours. I can't get them out of my head till this day. Eric must have sneaked up on me as I looked up and he was standing right next to me, a little too close. I could feel his breath on my neck. My name is Lucy. Eric asked me, Lucy, are you married? He almost giggled after he asked me this. He had a smirk on his face which made me feel as if he was trying to pretend that he thought I was older than I was. And at 16, I looked 16. Eric liked to ask me questions that he already knew the answer to, just to see what my reaction would be, letting me know in his own way that he had been looking up information about me on social media. He would do this frequently. I began to clock on to the fact that Eric had been going a little further than just approaching me at work, and instead stalking my social media accounts in the weeks following the first encounter, such as Twitter and Instagram. When he began asking me very specific questions about things I had posted in the days before. For example, I had posted on Instagram about a tattoo I got, which was a tribute to my favorite band. I was serving a customer one day only to be interrupted by a shrill but quiet voice. It was Eric. His eyes were huge and he had a look of pure excitement and menace on his face. He had yet again entered my workplace when he wasn't supposed to, just to talk to me. Referring to the tattoo I got of my favorite band, he asked me what my favorite song of theirs was. He relished in my discomfort. You could see by my reaction that I was clocking on the fact that he had been viewing my personal social media, and the thought of that made my blood run cold. I felt disgusting and violated. The tattoo I had gotten was covered by my work uniform, so the only way he could have seen this was by going through my Instagram page. This creeped me out majorly, but somehow I just forced myself to forget all about it and carried on working. Over the course of a few months, Eric would come to my workplace more and more frequently, asking me bizarre questions, and still reciting back to me things I had tweeted about or posted on Instagram. Every time I would see him, I would get visibly uncomfortable, and he liked this. This is what he wanted. All while this was happening, Jessica approached me and let me know that he, Eric, had followed her in his car on her walk home from work, slowing down to ask her where she lived. I had also been told other disturbing news about Eric from multiple different people. It seemed as if he was becoming more invested in whatever his intentions were towards me and Jessica. News had traveled to one of my managers about Eric's unsettling actions towards me, and this manager informs me that a few years ago, Eric was rumored to have followed a young girl who used to work for a restaurant into a toilet. Things didn't quite make sense. He was known for being a creep yet still employed at the shopping center. On one hand, I was glad to know I wasn't just creeped out for no reason. But on the other hand, I was frightened as he'd been doing this for years yet no one had stopped him. Anyways... There was a woman who worked at the same place of me called Rebecca, and she had some sort of disability which caused her to befriend and be trusting of people without knowing anything about them. Just very naive. It seems that Eric took advantage of her as he had asked for her phone number and she gave it to him. Rebecca showed me her text with Eric. He had texted her things like, Rebecca, Rebecca are you alone? Are you alone? And... Rebecca, are you set on the bus alone? alone? But the most alone. unsettling part of it was the text from Eric that read, Rebecca, could you please let me know any information on the girls that work at X restaurant? The restaurant I worked at. I was stunned. This was quite slowly turning into my nightmare. I was constantly questioning why this old man was so hell-bent on finding out everything to do with my life. Why me? He had gone out of his way to source information about me through a vulnerable person I worked with, and I was scared he was going to go further. 
Again, this creeped me out, but still for some reason I forgot about it and carried on with my life, which was very, very hectic at the time. And in a way, I'm grateful that I didn't have the time to dwell on Eric's growing obsession. However, this was something I wouldn't be able to ignore forever, as Eric began inserting himself into my life in ways I couldn't just ignore or brush off. One night I was watching the movie Grease with my family, and I must have tweeted something stupid like, Grease is my favorite film, because it's a great film, right? Anyways, the morning after my tweet, Eric approaches me in his usual way and utters, Do you like the film Grease, Lucy? <laughs> The same usual smirk lit up his face, and the same usual wave of disgust washed over me. He was really trying to make it a point to let me know he was watching me. I tried to carry on with my day, but spent the entirety of my shift feeling a little shaken up. To someone reading this story, it may not seem as unsettling to you as it did to me at the time. But when someone is going out of their way to make sure you know, they know information about you, spend every waking hour thinking about what they plan to do with this information and why they insist on taunting you with this knowledge. The very second I clocked out of work and got into my car, my phone went off. This was a notification for PayPal. I clicked on this notification to see that I received three pounds from an Eric Stanley and the note attached to it read, To Lucy, Greece is the word from Eric. He literally found my PayPal account and sent me three pounds with a quote from the movie attached to it. In the days following, I received a string of anonymous calls, incessant calls, one after the other. I was in floods of tears and ended up having a huge panic attack. I felt like there was no escape. My phone rang and rang and rang all night. I had to turn it off to get away. Even when I turned my phone back on, the calls continued and every time my phone would ring, my head felt like it was being impaled with the sharpest knife in the world. I was on the complete edge. The phone calls that I did answer were just someone breathing down the phone, making a point to breathe heavy. I swear it was weird. It, it sounded inappropriate, I'll say. Which sickened me. I had no proof that this was Eric, but it wasn't hard to put two and two together after all the links he had gone to in order to track down my personal information. If he had found out my PayPal address, my phone number, and all of my social media accounts, what's stopping him from finding out where I live? Breaking in? Hurting me or my family? That night I had horrific dreams in which he chased me around my house and taunted me for hours. I still have similar dreams and struggle to sleep without my boyfriend present, as I'm scared he's standing right outside my door to this day. I reported Eric to my managers and they passed my complaint on to the managers of the shopping center. At this point I was genuinely scared for my safety. Multiple girls had added to my statement and added details of times that they had witnessed Eric's unsettling behavior, or times he had been inappropriate with them too. Eric had been cautioned by the shopping center's management, yet nothing was done, except the fact that he was warned not to talk to me. Eric found ways around the no talking to Lucy rule. He would make animal noises at me when he would see me, like a monkey or a dog, or any bizarre noise that would get my attention. I think he just wanted me to think that he had outsmarted me, found a way around the rules. After this, I stopped working at the restaurant as a full-time job and saw Eric less and less, which was obviously great for me. I moved cities as I went away for university and made new friends, which distracted me from my old life in my old town. I still thought about Eric every now and then, and when I focus on it for too long, I can't be alone, out of fear that he is still keeping tabs on me. The thought of that terrifies me. After moving away and starting my new life, I forgot all about the twisted little man who used to obsess over me at my old job. I forgot he existed, but I was soon going to remember. On Christmas Day, I was back home in my hometown with my parents. My phone buzzed, and I expected it to just be a message from a friend or family member. But I was wrong. I received a notification from PayPal. And it was the exact amount of three pounds, only not from Eric this time, 
but from a girl whose name I didn't recognize at all. I opened up the PayPal app only to see a note attached to this payment I had received. The note read, Sending on behalf of Eric. My blood ran cold again. I had forgotten all about this man and all he had done to make me feel unsafe and unsettled, and here he was again, antagonizing me, yet this time doing it through other people. Perhaps his way of telling me that him being banned from talking to me won't stop him from entering my world. I threw my phone down on the couch and spent the night drinking with family, until I forgot about the notification. I probably should have told someone about it, but I just wanted to do as much as I could to block him out. I didn't want him to control me anymore, and since I hadn't seen or heard from him in a long time, I wanted it to stay that way. I think Eric is still working at the shopping center and lives local to me. I avoid my old workplace so I don't have to see him, and he doesn't have to see me. So to the creepy, beady-eyed freak that made me live in fear. Let's not meet again. Thank you so much for listening, and until next time. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze.